Good afternoon. I'm Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video where I will present you two very interesting questions, very relevant and practical acceleration velocity questions that you should be familiar with in your 12th grade high school physics or math class. Moreover, I'll be presenting you two very interesting formulas that you need to know which make handling these type of questions very easy. These are the style of questions where your car is arriving at a red light and it'll come to a stop or where your car will start from a traffic light and it'll continue with its new velocity. The type of questions where a car comes to a stop or where it continues onward after having come to a stop. Very relevant material and you will see that to be the case by the time this video is over. So let's start by looking at the very first question. A car starts from rest with an acceleration of 3 meters per second square. You have to find its final velocity after a distance of 50 meters. There is nothing here mentioned with regards to time. You're looking at a car which was stopped, but now it's moving. It could have been stopped at a red light. Now it's beginning to move. You have here, because it was stopped, an initial velocity of 0 meters per second. A final velocity has to be determined. And acceleration is given 3 meters per second square and you have a distance after which you have to determine the velocity of the car and that distance term is not as good as you using the word position because position like velocity and acceleration has the meaning of a vector because it differs based on your direction so the word to use is position what is the velocity of this car having an acceleration of 3 meters per second square at a position of 50 meters from where it was your equation to use in these type of situations because there's nothing here with regards to time is this vf square minus vi square final velocity square minus initial velocity square is equal to 2 times acceleration times position but initial velocity is 0 and just calculating for vf is easy it's 2as you know what the values are coming in here 2 times acceleration which is 3 times position which is 50 you know you're looking here at something which is 2 times something in meters per second square times something in meters so you're looking at two times meters square or second square i'm ignoring these for right now these meters square second square when you do the square root will come out as a meters per second which is why your value here in terms of your units will be meters per second so keep that in mind just bring out your calculator and do the computation two times three times fifty square rooted your answer is 17.32 meters per second your final velocity is 17.32 meters per second. But how can you give this a certain context? If you were to multiply it by 9 over 4, and I'll talk about it in the second question, you can convert this into miles per hour and we'll talk about it. And it will be equivalent to 38.97 or let's say 39 miles per hour. And that would be a good unit to understand because it's easier to judge this than this. Our answer here is 17.32 meters per second or you can say 39 miles per hour. But both of these answers are good. We will talk about this conversion in the next. But you see how everything came about. This right here is your equation to memorize. It's called the third law of motion. In some books they call it the fourth law but generally this is your third law of motion. You're looking at variables which don't involve time so it's easy to utilize this. Second question, your car is approaching a red light. It's 100 meters away from that red light with a velocity of 55 miles per hour it takes 8 seconds to come to a stop you have to find your acceleration think about it you're driving now and you're coming to a stop your final velocity here must be zero but your initial velocity is what you're starting out with but here's miles per hour you must convert miles per hour to meters per second at any time you have miles per hour you multiply by 4 or 9 you get your meters per second at any time you have meters per second, you multiply by 9 over 4, the reciprocal, and you get your miles per hour. And that's exactly what I was talking about. I have 55. This is like a good cheat. You should remember this. I have 55 miles per hour. I'll multiply by 4 divided by 9. I'll have 24.44 meters per second. So I'm looking here at an initial velocity of 24.44 repeating meters per second. This is equivalent to that. Your conversion here between the two is 4 or 9 in this direction or 9 or 4 in the reverse direction. Remember that. Because time is involved and you have to find acceleration, your equation to use is this. Position is equal to your initial velocity times time. Here the initial velocity is this for a moving object plus half a t squared. You're solving for that. Your position here is right there. You're 100 meters away from your red light. Initial velocity is your velocity you've just calculated times time. It took 8 seconds to come to a stop plus half times acceleration times 8 squared which is 64. You're solving for this and it's not hard, it's just algebra. 
you have 100 is equal to 24.44 repeating times 8 plus 64 divided by 2 is 32a. You'll solve for a. And we'll do all of this computation in one round. I have this 24.44 meters per second multiplied by 8. I'll minus it from that 100. I'm getting a minus here, but don't worry, it's good. Divided by 32, and my acceleration is minus 2.986. Let's talk about that negative. It's minus 2.986 meters per second squared. Why is this acceleration minus here? Because like position and velocity, acceleration is a vector. It has magnitude and has direction. Here the minus tells you if your object is coming in this direction from left to right and it's going to come here to a stop, it must be opposed by something in the opposite direction so it can stop it so its velocity can decrease over time and that right there would be acceleration in the opposite direction because that's the only way your object will slow down over a period of time. If it's coming here from 24, 4 or 9, 24.44, 2 is 0, over a period of time the rate of change must be negative because the object will stop. It must be decreasing with time, hence your object will stop. If you were to look at it in terms of acceleration, you're looking at something like velocity and time with the acceleration as being the slope. You're looking at something like this, it's either non-linear or velocity with respect to time it's linear but in all instances from left to right is decreasing the slopes will always be negative in all instances here the slopes which represent acceleration remember velocity and time graphs give you a slope of uh, acceleration the acceleration must be negative because the slopes in all of these instances will be downward lines and they'll have a negative value hence this it's perfectly right your answer minus 2.986 is perfect it'll be good so here your equation to remember is this for an object that's 100 meters from a traffic light taking 8 seconds to stop traveling at 55 miles per hour or 24.44 meters per second, it needs an acceleration of minus 2.986 so that it can come to a complete stop and your video comes to an end. Thank you for watching.